All right, we're going to look at our derivations for the expressions for tangential and normal components of acceleration. So this is our 12.4, part two. Derivation slash proofs because we stated we stated our results. I want to show you how we come up with the results. One because because it's nice it's nice to see how we how we get our results. So we're not just getting a list of formulas. We're understanding what's going on. And two, it's good to good to practice or to, to have some familiarity with how we manipulate these vector quantities to get something that's going to be easy or useful or desirable to work with. So we started by saying we end up the very beginning for our, our acceleration we broke it into we took the derivative of the velocity vector and came up with an expression for the acceleration vector. We said that it was the rate of change of our speed with respect to time, times our unit tangent vector plus the speed times the magnitude of t prime times our unit principal unit normal vector. And we said that this was tangential component of acceleration plus our normal component of acceleration. And one of the results was that this gave us was that our acceleration is in the same plane as our tangent vector, unit tangent vector, and our unit normal vector. And what that allows us to do is use the dot product and the cross product to come up with uh, with expressions. And we in class we drew this drew this picture so we have we have our uh, curve for our vector value function in space. So this is our T and I'm going to say we have an acceleration vector at some particular time. Draw here, like this. So here's my acceleration vector. And we have a tangential component of acceleration. Here. And we have a normal component of acceleration. And we're saying that these are our unit normal and unit tangent vectors. So this is T and this is N. And what we're doing here is projecting, we're projecting our acceleration vector onto our, our unit tangent vector. And we project on here like so. And this length here is our acceleration dot t. And remember that the magnitude of t is 1, so we can make that, so we can say that. And we're going to project our acceleration onto our unit normal vector. And this portion here, the length of that portion, I'm going to erase this a little bit, that is our acceleration our unit normal vector, again because the length of the unit normal vector is 1. So let's, let's look at these quantities. So let's first look at an expression for v dot a. <coughs> a lot of times with, with, vector, with vector quantities, we start, start with, with something 
to try to try to manipulate it to get something useful. So we're going to start by looking at Let's look at the velocity. We're going to take the dot product of the velocity and the acceleration. I can write the velocity vector as the magnitude of the velocity, or the speed, times the unit tangent vector. And we're going to take the dot product of that with the acceleration. And we came up with an expression for the acceleration. So I'm going, going to put that in into my dot product. So this is my speed times the unit tangent vector and we're taking the dot product with the acceleration and we're going to use this ex this expression for acceleration so the magnitude the rate of change of the speed with respect to time times our unit tangent vector plus this other quantity times our unit normal vector And I'm going to, we're going to use the properties of dot product to, to, to write this out. So this comes out to be uh, our speed times the rate of change of our speed. I'm going to try to be neater here. My Vs. with respect to time, times t dot t. Plus, and now I'm going to take this, this dot product. We have the speed squared times the magnitude of t prime times t dot n. Well, t and n are both unit, unit, nor, unit vectors. So t dot t is 1. And t dot n, these are orthogonal vectors. So t dot n is 0. So we have that the velocity, we take the dot product with the acceleration, gives us the speed times the rate of change of the speed with respect to time. So I can write that uh, v dot a over the length of v, over our speed, equals the rate of change of the speed with respect to time. And this is the quantity that we were looking for. This is our tangential component of acceleration from our original expression here. So a sub t equals v dot a over the length of v. And if I write this in terms of r prime, r, r prime, we get that this equals r prime dot r double prime, I'm dropping the time dependence there, over the length of r prime. So there's our tangential component of acceleration expressed just in terms of r prime and our double prime. So that's the first quantity that we were looking for. And we came, came to that by looking at the dot product of the velocity and the acceleration. All right, so let's look at, since these are in the plane, let's look at what happens when we take the cross product of the velocity and the acceleration. So a lot of, with, with, vector, with vector quantities, a lot of times what we do is say, well, let's, let's form this product and see what comes out of it. Does something useful come out of it? So let's, now we're going to look at the cross product. So 
going to look at B cross A. And we're going to start with the same expression for the velocity and for the acceleration that we had in the last in the last derivation. So this is the speed times our unit tangent vector. And we're taking the cross product with our acceleration vector expressed in terms of the normal and tangential components. So this is rate of change of speed with respect to time times our tangential unit tangent vector plus our normal component and now we're going to do the same thing that we did before but this time with the cross product so this equals um, the speed times the rate of change of the speed with respect to time times t cross t plus the speed squared times the magnitude of t prime times t cross m. And we know that t cross t is zero. And the magnitude of t cross n, because each one is a unit vector, is one. So we're going to look at the magnitude of v cross a. So the magnitude of our velocity, cross product with our velocity and acceleration. equals speed squared times the magnitude of t prime times 1. And we can say that, and our here was the, the expression that we were looking for for our normal component of acceleration, the speed times t prime. So our speed times the magnitude of t prime is the magnitude of v cross a divided by the magnitude of v. And that is our normal component of acceleration. And we can write this in terms of r and r prime, which is what, what we're looking for. This is the magnitude of r prime across the magnitude of r double prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. So there's our normal component of acceleration expressed just in terms of r prime and r double prime. And we came to that by looking at the cross product of the velocity and acceleration, manipulating that cross product to get out the quantities that we were looking for. All right. Finally, we're going to look at the dot product of the acceleration with itself. A dot A. So we're going to see if we get anything interesting out of this. Well, remember from the properties of the dot product, this is the magnitude of the acceleration squared. And we're going to say that this is we're going to start with a little easier expression for um, for our acceleration because we now we have the tangential a way to calculate the tangential and normal components. I'm going to say this is a sub t times our unit tangent vector 
plus a sub n times our unit normal vector. And we're making the dot product of that with itself. So do I have my term here? Let me move this over a little bit so this will all fit on there. expression that we're looking for, or that we're going to use. Our dot product. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right, now we're going to do this dot product, so the magnitude of a squared. And we're just going to manipulate this dot product now. We get a sub t squared times t dot t plus 2 a sub t a sub n t dot n. And we start to see something interesting happening here plus a sub n squared and dot n. Just expanding out this dot product. Well, t dot t and n dot n are 1. Because each of those is a unit vector. And t dot n, because those are orthogonal, equals 0. So we're left with the magnitude of the acceleration squared equals a sub t squared plus a sub n squared. And we get an expression for our normal component of acceleration, which is often fairly easy to calculate, the square root of the magnitude of the acceleration squared minus the tangential component of the acceleration squared. And this is often easier to calculate than the cross product that we looked at in the last example. But we have a couple of ways to come up with, with our, tan our normal component of acceleration. 